Now let's look at some features of the uh, central nervous system. Uh, actually, the histology of the central nervous system is incredibly complex and complicated to do in any real meaningful detail. So really what we're going to do uh, in this section is just get a general uh, sense of the overview of how neurons appear within the central nervous system and then also how the uh, surrounding axons and their support cells appear. So we'll begin with uh, the first part of the central nervous system, which is the spinal cord. And this is a cross-section of the uh, spinal cord here. And you can see that the spinal cord roughly uh, equates to two halves, which are approximately mirror images of one another. Now, you can see that there's a central H, or butterfly-shaped region here, and this is called the grey matter. And this is where the neurons of the spinal cord are actually located. The other material which surrounds them, which we can see here, is called the white matter. And white matter is made up um, essentially of um, axons of the uh, neurons who reside in the grey matter and the associated support or uh, glial cells. So let's begin by increasing in magnification a little bit. And let's go to the outer uh, section of the cord here and we'll go up a little bit in uh, magnification and see what we can see. So here, perhaps from your uh, prior um, uh, study of nerve, um, you'll already know that in most routine histological preparations, the uh, myelin sheath of nerves is washed out because it's soluble in the organic solvents used to prepare the tissue. And this is the case in this section as well. The reason the stain in this looks a little different is that this is uh, stained with what's called cahal stain, which is used to highlight axons uh, and doesn't stain myelin. And here, what you might see reasonably clearly is that we have what clearly look like cross-sectional profiles of myelinated nerves uh, with the axon, the dark black core, which has shrunk back from the surrounding um, white space, which is where the myelin uh, would have been. And in fact, uh, as we go around the uh, white matter um, all the way around the cord, what we'll see, for example, if we look in this region up here, is varying profiles of axons cut largely in cross-section. There is some uh, connective tissue and some blood vessels. The connective tissue will appear has this dark staining material uh, here that sort of breaks the collections of uh, axons up into individual fascicles or nerve tracts. Now we'll look at the grey matter. And specifically we want to look at the grey matter in this region in here because it's in here that we'll see the most obvious neurons which are present in the spinal cord and these are uh, large motor neurons which send signals out that cause muscle contraction. So even at this lower magnification, we can see this population of cells here. They're quite large. And we can see that they have, we can't definitively say that this is an axon or a dendrite, but we can see that they have processes that extend out. And depending on the plane of section, they can look somewhat larger, as for example this one or this one, or they may look smaller, such as this one. In fact, some of these genuinely are uh, larger and smaller neurons, and it's not just a plane of section uh, artifact. Again, as we increase in magnification, uh, we can see here, if we take, for example, this, here we have a neuron. We can see the nucleus is in the plane of section here. It's a pretty large cell. Uh, here's what's probably the axon extending out. And then here is probably a little uh, bit of dendrite and a bit of a dendrite here. If we increase the magnification even further, we can see the nuclei of other cells which seem to surround these neurons and these are glial cell nuclei. So they belong to oligodendrocytes which myelinate the axons or to astroglia or to microglia and these are the characteristic glial cells of the uh, central nervous system. So that about uh, covers it for the cord. Uh, next we'll look at another part of the uh, central nervous system, the cerebellum. Now we're going to look at a part of the brain uh, called the cerebellum. Um, and I've chosen this part of the brain because the uh, structural organization of the neurons and associated material here is a little bit easier to understand than it is elsewhere, for example, in the uh, cerebrum. At this low magnification, the first striking feature you might notice is this tree-like structure, which appears to form a trunk and the branches of trees. And in fact, this is the white matter that uh, carries the axons that are carrying information to and from the cerebellum. Surrounding it is the uh, darker staining granular looking material here and then a homogeneous pale staining area that sits outside it. And collectively these two are the grey matter of the cerebellum. And the astute among you will have noticed that the relative positions of grey matter and white matter in the cerebellum are reversed 
relative to the spinal cord. In the spinal cord, the white matter is found on the outside and the grey matter on the inside. In the cerebellum, and indeed in the cerebrum, the uh, grey matter is found on the outside and the white matter is found on the inside. And now we're going to take a look at the uh, structure of the grey matter and the white matter uh, in this region here of the cerebellum. So we'll increase the magnification a little bit, and perhaps even a little bit further. And here we see the surface of the cerebellum, and this layer here, and the very granular layer beneath it uh, here, form the grey matter. The outer layer is called the molecular layer, and the inner layer here is called the granular layer, and then inside of that again is the uh, grey matter. The very dense, dark granular staining of the granular layer is staining of the nuclei, principally of neurons, and we'll be looking at uh, at least one population of those neurons in a moment. Whereas the molecular layer is made up of um, axons of the neurons which are located in the granular layer and some other neurons and uh, glial cells that sit between them. On higher magnification, in fact we'll go all the way up, one thing that you might notice is that there's a particular population of uh, neurons that sit at the boundary or the interface between the molecular layer and the granular layer of the grey matter. And these population of cells were first described by the same person who described Purkinje fibers in the heart, and so these are called Purkinje uh, neurons. Internal to the Purkinje neurons, most of the nuclei which you see in the granular layer are nuclei that belong to very much uh, smaller neurons. And it's not important to be able to identify the type. And then interspersed among those also are nuclei of, for example, blood vessels. And then some, uh, some of these nuclei, which you can't distinguish, are nuclei of glial cells. In the molecular layer, what we see are very big branched uh, dendritic processes of Purkinje neurons interspersed with, although it's not immediately apparent, uh, axons that come from the uh, granular layer here. And then interspersed among those are the nuclei of various different cells, but principally of glial cells that act to support this network of uh, axons and dendrites that form the molecular layer. And then if we move to the inside, and we can go in and look at the uh, white matter, so here we're looking at, uh, at white matter. If we go to the maximal magnification, um, some of this white matter should resemble to you peripheral nerve. It is, of course, not uh, peripheral nerve, but there is myelinated nerve here. And most of the uh, nuclei which we see here are nuclei that belong to uh, glial cells. So that's the essential uh, structure of the uh, cerebellum. We have an outer molecular layer. We have a layer of Purkinje neurons. And inside that we have a very dense layer, granular layer, made up of uh, three or four different types of neurons. And then inside that again we have the white matter, where the cell nuclei represent uh, essentially all um, glial cells. Finally, we're going to look at some uh, neurons in a dorsal root ganglion, or also called a sensory ganglion. And these are small structures that hang out, if you like, from the uh, spinal cord. But in fact, technically, they're part of the uh, spinal cord. So they're still part of the uh, central nervous system. And the neurons which are found here are the neurons, uh, the cell bodies of uh, sensory uh, neurons whose axons extend out to the periphery and which carry sensory information from the periphery in towards the uh, central nervous system. There are two sections on this particular uh, slide. We're going to look at this one here and we won't take uh, very long. We're just going to look very briefly at the uh, neurons which are here because they're well seen here. And if we go to about the middle level of magnification, <coughs> the neurons are the very large uh, round cells with very distinct nuclei. And they're based on the staining we can see here, at least two different populations. One set of neurons are located towards the outside of the dorsal root ganglion. And these other ones are for in the uh, center of the dorsal root ganglion. The reasons they stain differentially really aren't uh, important uh, for our purposes. Um, but let's uh, take a look in perhaps a little more detail at some of these ones in toward the center, the browner staining ones. So we go up in magnification. And again, what we see here are very large, uh, rounded sort of cells with large, um, prominent uh, cell nuclei. We can see many much smaller nuclei surrounding each of these neurons. And these are a population of so-called satellite cells. They're special glial cells which help support the uh, metabolic activity and the uh, transmission activities of these particular uh, neurons. Between the neurons, the material which we see here is a combination of uh, axons, 
uh, some of which are myelinated and some of which are not. And then clusters of nuclei that we see like these, and these are the nuclei of glial cells. So they're either oligodendrocytes involved in myelinating axons, or they may be uh, microglial cells, or in fact they may be um, astrocytes. Again, we can look at this population of neurons here, very closely related, they're just not quite exactly identical. And here again we see very, very large um, cell bodies here. Um, it's not clear where the axons uh, begin and end. Uh, and here we have nuclei. Some of them contain nucleoli like this. And some of them have no nucleus within the uh, plane of section that we're looking at here. And again, there are satellite cells that form a sort of a palisade or a border around these uh, neurons. And then interspersed among them are occasional uh, other nuclei of uh, glial cells as well. So that covers the uh, overview of the appearance of uh, neurons and axons within the central uh, nervous system. One last thing that you might want to do on this slide, if you wish, is to review what the appearance of peripheral nerve would be. And again, remember, uh, this has been stained, especially in this case, it's stained with silver stain to show uh, axons rather than show myelin. And this is what uh, the axons of peripheral nerves in longitudinal section uh, appear uh, like when they're stained with uh, silver. And that should uh, conclude our overview of the nervous system.